Welcome back to Bell and Blank on Woodward Sports Network. Um, blank and Bell, but yeah. Okay, yeah. you know Blank and That's Bell. It says well, Bell and Blank on YouTube. You know I, what? I like Bell and Blank. Okay. I like yeah. Bell and Blank, though. We'll do Bell and Blank. We'll do Bell and Blank for right now. I feel like huh? Blank and Bell just sounds like bars, like Blank and, bar. and Bell. Blank and Bell. It is some bars. Bell and Blank. I like when people try to sneak into the studio like we can't see them. <laughs> I'm joking. All right, we're going we're, we're gonna to be moving on um, into an interesting topic. Uh, and it'll, it kind of, it'll tie into our next topic. Okay, oh, okay. So, what that's fine. Oh. So, okay, we were talking about Justin Fields and the failed quarterbacks of OSU. Painful yeah. for me to say. But, and yeah. this is also painful for me to say because I love Urban Meyer. But is it possible that it's maybe a little bit of his fault? I mean, we saw it with Tebow. And then we saw it with all of his quarterbacks that came out of OSU. Can you – can – can that be his fault at all that the the quarterbacks don't perform well in the NFL? You said you love who? Urban you know, Meyer. You love who? He, he's got Trevor Lawrence. You no, love who? So. Throw something at me. I don't give a fuck. I'll say it. Whoa. I love Urban Meyer. Uh, Jags are my number two team guy. this season. But that's your guy, though. Urban Meyer is my guy. Yeah. So why are you just downplaying him? Like but that? do you think maybe it, it could be his his fault a little mm-hmm. bit? You know what though? I think uh, when Devin was on the show, he kind of um, kind of alluded to when you have guys like. Or you have, you have quarterbacks on teams like Ohio State where they have great receivers, they have a good defense, they have a great running back. It's like too. Alabama. Urgent. So it's like Alabama, similar in, similar to Alabama, like with Mac Jones. Like mm-hmm. essentially, he just has to drop back and hand the ball off to um, to a Harris, Najee. to yep. to, to, right. to, to, to an to, NFL running back. Right. Essentially, all right, and you have all these good running backs to a point to where. We got to stop the run game. We have to stop it. So they take a guy out uh, out of the um, out of the secondary, put another guy in the box, and now you have to rush eight instead of seven. And so now it makes Matt Jones' job a little bit easier. And so when they get to the NFL, it's not always that way. You know, you get in disguised defenses. You you know everything's a little bit different, a little bit harder. And so you know, even from Terrell Pryor, uh, um, who else we have? Um, Dwayne has. Yeah, you can do Dwayne. Yeah, you can do oh, Dwayne. So Cardell, these, Cardell Jones. You yeah. Got, so you have all these guys who go into the NFL and they don't pan out the way that we expect them to pan out because they were on good teams. Right. Now, you know, the one guy that I'm really interested in seeing is Trey Lance. I want to see how Trey Lance mm-hmm. does. Me too. You know, I think he's going to be one of the most successful quarterbacks out of that group. But, you know, that's just me outside looking in. You know, he's coming from a smaller school. Trigger so trip. you have to do more. You have to do more to get noticed. And once you do get noticed, you have to stay dominant against your competition because you can't have any – you really can't have too many down games, all right? Because as soon as you have one down game, that's when the critics, the scouts, the, the GMs, the owners, oh, he's playing against inferior competition, you know? And so I think – I don't think it's Urban Meyer. I think Urban Meyer does a great job of recruiting to put his quarterbacks in a position to where they don't have too much – stress too or, much on yeah, or, or, or overwhelm, you know? Mm-hmm. And so they have to carry the entire team. Right. So every team that Urban Meyer has, uh, at one point in time, that the quarterback had, had to carry the entire team because no one, was, no one else was doing their job. I, I think that might be the issue that you might be having. That might be their issue coming in, not having to deal with too much adversity on the college level. But all in all, I just haven't seen a successful quarterback come out of um, Ohio State since I've been around. I haven't. Speaking of Urban Meyer and Ohio State, you guys think U of M in Michigan – Harbaugh, do you think it actually beat Ohio State this year? you think it's a possibility? Is there any chance in hell? Who's their quarterback? Michigan's? Yeah. They got J.J. McCarthy, and then they got, like, an upperclassman in front of him. But well, not hang really. on. Real quick, this is exactly what Jim Harbaugh said. That's what we want to do. And, uh, and we're going to do it or die trying. And he also said Ooh, this. 50 Cent vibes uh, right there. It's just a bunch of guys. I'm just, just feeling that, that they uh, – and that's why that's why I mentioned it a little bit earlier. But you know, I know Cade McNamara's got it. You know, he's got that. He's, he's got to win. I must win. I must win. Uh, Aiden Hutchinson, Hassan Haskins, uh, Josh Ross. Mm-hmm. You know, he's, he's going into his fifth year. Uh, played a lot of football at Michigan. His brother played at Michigan. Brother coached at Michigan. Uh, Brad Hawkins, our safety, uh, and Dax Hill, uh, Blake Corum. Uh, and lo and behold, you're looking at Zinter and Hayes and Stuber and these, these linebackers that just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Hutchinson's, you see him this weekend, but also David Ajabo and watching Taylor Upshaw walk through the door and, uh, and uh, 
Braden McGregor and, and Gabe Newberg and Mozzie Smith and and these guys are they want they want it you know. They're can I can I just say this? It just sounds so. Why why did okay he's talking is his main argument the experience of his team like as they get older and they're upperclassmen now is that is that kind of the basis of his argument? There's no like you still don't have as much talent as Ohio State. I mean you've only took one win in the last 15 matchups. So I mean that and if you're gonna die trying you you might die. Hurt people hurt people Jeff. I don't know. I love the enthusiasm. <laughs> it sounds like Lions fans are, but yeah, still it it's like it God. Does. I didn't see any enthusiasm. It was more just He's talking. Th- we I got think our he's team. Just facts. He's we experienced team. and. and the, you know, it's, it's going to be people buying into what he's, you know, buying into what all he's board. selling. He's there for four more years. <laughs> no, but like in all seriousness. No, no, because, you know, they gave him. The, so, listen, look at this contract. They they lowered, they gave him a, a lower contract yeah. because basically he's underperformed on the field. Now, as far as recruiting, he's, if you look right there, he had, what, two of the top. Um, he was in the top two recruiting classes five out of the last six years. So he can't say we, he, they don't have the talent. Right, they do. Right. They have, they have the, the talent. Now, do they have the coordinators? Now, do they have the coordinators? Is that the coach's job Stug to get it. the coordinators? Huh? Is that like G- that, is, is that it, it's their job to get the coordinator with with the money? Oh, gotcha. Is, does he have enough money to go out here to get the top of the line coordinators? They Because right money. now, could defensively, they were getting smacked. Yeah, they get smacked. Why well, uh, are they are they not scoring? Are they scoring? They're scoring points. Yeah, they're scoring. All right. But defensively, they're not stopping teams. What, the, the last game, yeah, that's what was that defensively. I don't think they scored much in the last game, uh, 2019. Bro, the, the rivalry's gotten so bad. 2020, I, I get COVID happened. Michigan didn't want to play the damn game. They tapped out. They were scared to show up to the fight. They said, oh, I got uh, uh, that COVID thing on. I can't. I play all these uh-huh. other teams, but we can't really mess with y'all this year. We're going to take so, this one out. I'm going to sit this. You want to relax? It's gotten that bad, Joy. You can't. They didn't even show up, man. In 2019, the score was, I have this paper somewhere, 27-56. They scored. It's 27 points. They scored. Yeah, the 60s. 56 yeah. points. Well, that, that makes his argument. His, his but, defensively. But, yeah, that's bad. what I'm saying, defensively. Yeah. And so, we talked about this on the show, that when you have a quarterback, when you have a quarterback on the other side, um, uh, on, on, on the other side of our defense, we got a quarterback, like say, like a Tom Brady, you're going to – that's going to help energize the other teammates around you because you know you have a quarterback that's always going to keep you in position to eventually win the game, a uh, Patrick Mahomes. And so now when you have that type of confidence in your in your quarterback, now that's going to heighten the way you play. Now you might play better than what you typically play because now you really feel like we got a shot to win. Yeah, We got a shot to win. Now when you have teams like Michigan where, you know, you have a, a, a subpar quarterback, or you have a decent quarterback, or you have a quarterback transferring now, leaving, come on the same, in, yeah, in, in and out. And so, uh, no burden. You, know, you don't know. You know, you understand. Like when I played uh, for Wayne State, we had a different quarterback every single year I played. That's tough. That's, that's How can crazy. we build a winning culture with having a different quarterback every single year? The, right. There was, there is a losing streak I believe you were part of, and that was the Lions w- winning in Green Bay. Were you there for that? When they, they yeah. Fight? yeah, we, we beat them at Green Bay, yeah. Was that a narrative heading to the locker room? And, and like, like was, no. Was part of that, like, what helped break that? It just happen or, like? No, we just wanted to win the game. We don't really go into looking to all that. Like, I remember when we played in D.C. Uh, that was actually the first game I ever started. We hadn't won in D.C. in 75 years. Basically, we had never won there. Yeah. I and my that. first game starting there was the first time we ever won, which was a great feeling because – not only was that my first start, but that start is the game that made me um, a veteran in this league. That was my third game of my fourth season. So I was like, oh, yeah, now I'm vested. That made me a vested player. And started. Yeah, yeah, and started that game and got MVP or off, well, office MVP for that game. So it was a great game. But going into that game, I didn't know all that until after the game where they came back and told us, like, yeah, we haven't won there in 75 years. I said, oh, wow. Isn't it better that way, too, a little bit when you don't know, like, all the history? Yeah. You just go and you just play football, and then exactly. you find out, hey, we beat yeah. these guys after how many years of not beating them? If you want to be like Stanley Cup champion Darren McCarty, go to CoachPortland.com and get your Coach products today.